Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel and I got some leaks for you guys. So the Jordan Luca one has finally been leaked. We've had some information on Jordan brand actually giving Luca Doncic a signature shoe. Of course, we have Zion Williamson. He has his own shoe with Jordan brand. We have Russell Westbrook with the Why Not series and what other shoe there is there? I mean, we did have the CP3s, but they stopped making the CP3s and then also they stopped making the Mellows. We have Jordan's signature line of course right uh, am i forgetting anyone else um i don't think i am but uh, i definitely do think jason tatum should have a signature shoot right but anyways before we get into the luca one we do have a leak of the Giannis immortality 2 finally and it is his budget shoe right it's going for 80 bucks i believe and the Giannis immortality the original one was amazing right but as you guys all know nike when it comes to like budget models they're cheaper shoes if it's kind of like a, a shoe line uh, they just reuse the midsole and outsole and uh, we can see that in like the KD trays the lebron soldiers i don't think they've done that maybe because it's a little bit more expensive right it's a little bit more premium than the other shoes i mean 80 bucks versus like 140 bucks uh, for the Giannis immortality and the lebron soldier line right and then uh in the Kyrie fly traps they do the same thing as well so uh yeah here is the traction of the Giannis immortality too and it's literally identical to the Giannis immortality and that's a good thing you know the Giannis immortality had great traction the only thing i hope for is that they did not change up the rubber compound because if they did then it'll perform a little bit differently even though it's the same pattern and everything right uh so we have herringbone and all that which is great and then uh as far as the material goes the material is different the upper is the only thing that's different so for the midsole it's exactly the same as well the shape the foam is probably the same as well the Giannis immortality was just a regular foam but it was kind of soft, you know? Um, I mean, you had really good court feel and you're really low to the ground, but impact protection, like hard impacts, wasn't the best, but there was a little bit of compression and a tiny bit of bounce back, which was pretty nice, especially for like an $80 budget shoe from Nike, right? Uh, so there's the cushion and then the upper we can see, uh, it's just a mesh material. We have a close-up of it and um, it looks pretty nice. I mean, the original Giannis Immortality was all right, you know? Um, I liked it because it was super thin and very minimal feeling, which the Giannis Immortality 2 also looks like it's a very thin material. We can see a little bit of fuse here at the tip of the toe for extra durability and support. One thing that I kind of like, it's growing on me, is the reverse swoosh. I feel like I just like a regular swoosh better, but uh, the reverse swoosh, this placement is pretty interesting. And I guess Giannis just likes reverse swooshes because he's had it in the Zoom Freak 1. It was literally on the midsole and it was a huge swoosh, right? Here in the ankle area, it looks pretty much the same. And then also another thing that I noticed is this like strap, right? We can see this yellow kind of material that acts as eyelids and then goes down into the actual material for extra support. So that's a good thing on the lateral side. It's more in the midfoot though. I would have liked to see a little bit more in the forefoot, but I feel like it'll definitely help for lateral support. And um, yeah, uh, on, let's look at the top. Yeah, we can definitely see, oh, the, the yellow strap is on both the lateral and medial side. And uh, yeah, the material overall looks super thin and doesn't seem to have a lot of foam in the ankle area uh, as well. So yeah, I mean, the aesthetics haven't really changed all too much. It's literally the same exact shoe. The only thing that's changed is the swoosh. And I guess that does make the shoe look pretty different actually, right? Um, but as far as performance goes, I feel like it'll be just as good as the Giannis Immortality. I mean, I don't really know why it would be different. I guess besides if the material was a little bit thicker or something, but that still wouldn't make it feel all too different, right? Uh, so anyway, that's the Giannis Immortality. Probably gonna go for 80 bucks. Release date will probably be in like a month or two. But anyway, stay tuned for that. But let's get it started off with the Luca one. And uh, we have we don't have a clear picture of the outsole. We only, I only could find this picture. And the Dallas Mavs actually put it on their reels on Instagram, which is pretty interesting. They probably coordinated something with Jordan Brand. Obviously, they wouldn't be allowed to do this if Jordan Brand didn't okay it, right? But anyways, the traction looks pretty interesting. In this color, we have the translucent outsole and we have some lines. There seems to be a triangle and kind of like gets bigger on itself, right? And there seems to be a couple of triangles here there are like three triangles in the forefoot and then here in the heel it seems to be more like a wavy line right uh one thing that does disappoint me though is that the the tread is super thin it looks like and also it doesn't look like a very deep tread either so it doesn't seem like it'll be very durable but we'll have to see on 
the actual rubber compound and how it performs on an actual core. Here in the midfoot, it doesn't look super clear in this picture, but there seems to be maybe like a midfoot shank plate. And if you look at the on-foot pictures of, uh, of the shoe, uh, we can see that there is a pretty crazy midfoot shank plate. It comes from both the medial and lateral side. It looks to be uh, symmetrical, right? It kind of cages the cushion and goes underneath the shoe as well. So as far as the traction goes, I mean, uh, I'm not too worried about it. And Jordan Brand usually has solid traction in all of their basketball shoe models. And Luca has been signed to Jordan Brand for quite a while. So he usually wears either the signature shoe or he was wearing the React Elevation. Remember this shoe, guys? This shoe was amazing. I really, really liked it. And we have the React midsole here in the heel, right? And um, earlier this year he was playing in the zoom separate but then he just got a signature shoe so that's pretty interesting because they're like oh yeah this is zoom separate it's a very i love that shoe right but then like you know luca kind of wore it and it was kind of his shoe kind of like how blake griffin was wearing the superflies right uh but then like a couple months later it's like oh yeah we got the luca signature shoe right so as far as the shape of the sole goes uh, the heel, we can see that it's very curved, which I like. And the heel seems very exposed. That plastic cage kind of only comes up in the midfoot area, right? So I like how it's very exposed in the heel. That'll allow for a lot of compression from the foam, which is, they're using an, a brand new foam. It's called Formula 23. It's an injected foam. And um, I don't know, I, I have my doubts about it but i feel like it'll be nice because jordan brand has been giving us really nice foams even when it's just like a phylon right so for example in the zoom separates the zoom separate it has a lot of compression in the heel even though it's just a regular like phylon and it's quite soft and same thing with the one take three you know they've been making their foams like their phylon a little bit softer and this is a brand new phone right so hopefully there's a lot of compression but a lot of you guys i posted this on instagram and a lot of you guys were very disappointed that there's no zoom and i'm kind of disappointed in that as well i mean all the shoes that luke has been playing in from jordan brand has had crazy zoom uh, i mean the react elevation is just a four foot zoom unit and same thing with the zoom separate but it's like top loaded have a nice little bounce but of course the jordan uh, signature shoe line we got full length of zoom struggle which is the craziest that you could get, right? So yeah, I feel like that's a little bit of a downgrade, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I feel like it'll be nice. They, they say it's responsive and all that, you know, yada yada, but I, I gotta try it out. Uh, hopefully it's soft and hopefully there's a lot of compression, you know, here in the heel. I definitely feel like it, there would be because it is fully exposed. Coming here into the lateral side of the shoe, we can see that cage and then we can see more caging. So in the midfoot, I just don't understand why you need to cage it that much. You know, and as you guys can see this blue like oval shape. And then in the forefoot, we can see a triangle shape as well. I and mean, that makes sense. In the forefoot, when you're kind of playing and uh, you're doing like, I don't know, like these types of movements, you don't want this part to be too soft or so it'll feel a little unstable, right? But here in the midfoot, I don't really understand it all too much as far as the caging of the cushion goes. We can also see an external heel counter here. And also for the cushion, it says here, they're using an isoplate foot frame, which is very similar to the Jordan 28 and 29 kind of like speed plate or flight plate that they use, right? And it says it wraps up the lateral forefoot to keep players contained over the footbed, helping secure the foot when going from front to back. And as far as the materials go, the materials they're saying, oh, well, it looks like a textile or a mesh material and on top of that we can see some wire like some string and they're calling that flight wire cable and they're saying it's more on the lateral side and also on top of the toe as you guys can see on the medial side it doesn't seem to have the flight wire cables which makes sense you don't really need support on the medial side of the shoe you need it more on the lateral side right so of course that'll definitely help with support and durability but overall this the material looks super thin and which i like you know and also uh, one thing that they do emphasize is that the foam the formula 23 foam is a very lightweight foam as well so the weight of the shoe i feel like it's gonna be pretty damn light there seems to be very little padding for the tongue and also in the ankle area there doesn't seem to be a lot of padding either uh, for the actual like quality of the materials, just looking at it, it doesn't look very nice. The fuse that they're using looks kind of cheap and stuff, but uh, overall, I feel like it'll be pretty nice on foot. If it's thin and it's not super stiff, I won't really mind it that much. And as far as a release date, this is coming from Sneaker News, so it can be wrong, but that's what they're saying right now. And on June 30th, we have the first release of the first colorway of the Luca 1. And for the colorway, it says photo blue, white, black, and glacier ice. And then there's a second colorway coming out on July 7th, 2022. 
Uh, it's a white metallic silver and neo turquoise. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's coming out, I guess, in like a month, right? It's April, uh, well, April is basically over. And then May and then June, so I guess like two months. We, we gotta wait two months for it. And for the aesthetics, um, I don't know, guys. I'm a little indifferent. Uh, as far as the comments go on Instagram, a lot of you guys seem to love it. And also a lot of you guys seem to dislike it <laughs> very, very strongly. I, I'm somewhere in between. Uh, like when I look at it, sometimes I'm like, I don't like it. And sometimes when I look at it, I'm like, oh, it looks pretty good, right? I'm not a huge fan of the placement of the logo. Like it's on the foam and it's in the heel. Uh, that's kind of, it's kind of weird, right? And also not a huge fan of the oval. The oval looks so weird. And it's just like, it looks to me like it's not supposed to be there. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, let's just add it in for whatever <laughs> reason. But I do like the overall look of the material and the overall silhouette looks pretty cool as well. So tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. So yeah, I'm pretty damn excited to try out the brand new Formula 23 foam. Hopefully it's not too heavy. Now, I feel like it'll be around like 12, I don't think it'll go over 13 ounces, right? So maybe around 11 to 12 ounces. That's my guess. But I am disappointed that there is no zoom unit, right? Uh, maybe just give give us a little four foot zoom unit like this, you know? Or a, a heel zoom unit. I don't really care all too much about heel zoom units. Or maybe a full length zoom unit. I mean, that's not unheard of because they gave us a full length zoom unit in the Why Not 0.1, if you guys remember, right? Um, but I guess, you know, foam is nice. But it's such a different feeling for Luca. you know what I mean? Like, he's been playing in the 36 with full-length zoom strobe and he's changing to just foam, right? So, uh, that's a pretty big change for him. And I wonder what his take was for the cushion. Like, what did he ask for? I wonder if he was like, yeah, I want full-length zoom strobe to Jordan Brand or the designer. And he's like, nope, uh, we're making your shoe cheaper so we can't put full-length zoom strobe in or something. I wonder what happened. But anyways, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.